as we're sitting here in the present moment, there are a lot of things we could focus on. You could focus on the sound of the crickets. You could focus on the sound of the bombing practice off there to the west, the temperature of the air, all kinds of things. The question is, which thing are you going to focus on that's going to get the best results for the mind? And this is where the breath comes in. It's something that's here. It's something here all the time, coming in, going out, or still, giving us our sense of the body. It's a place where we can settle, and we can stay in touch with it all times if we're mindful. It's important to understand what mindfulness is. It's keeping something in mind. The word sati is related to the verb sarati, which means to remember. So you focus your perceptions on one particular thing, and then you keep reminding yourself to stay there. This is how concentration is developed. But it's not just a memory. For the concentration to be as part of the path, it has to be alert as well. We're not trying to put ourselves into a trance. We simply want to stay focused on an aspect of the present moment that's going to be helpful, and to watch it. The mindfulness is what keeps us at that present sensation or that present occurrence. And the alertness is, to, is what allows us to see what's going on. And then the third quality we add is persistence, ardency. Keep with it. No matter how loud the bombs are going to get, or persistent the crickets, or whatever, you're not going to go there. You know they're there, you're not going to deny that they're there, but you just know that's not a place to go. Just going to keep tabs on this one thing, the breath coming in, going out. If you prefer a meditation word, you can stay with Bhutto. If you want, you can focus on the parts of the body, like the bones, the skin, your liver. Anything that keeps you grounded here in the present moment in a way that helps mindfulness and alertness to grow, to develop. It's this sticking with these qualities that's going to help them grow. Or it's that element of persistence. The ardency of the persistence means that if you notice yourself wandering off, you bring the mind right back. Wind yourself again, bring it back again. You don't give up, you don't get discouraged. While you're with the breath, ardency means that you're trying to be as sensitive as possible to the breathing. And as John Lee says, that when you're ardent in being mindful and alert like this, ardency, excuse me, mindfulness and alertness change into the factors of jhana. Steady concentration. We often hear that mindfulness practice and concentration practice are two different things, but the Buddha never taught that way. He says right mindfulness leads naturally to right concentration. In all of the descriptions of the path, like the Noble Eightfold Path, the Five Faculties, Seven Factors of Awakening, right mindfulness always precedes right concentration. So don't think of them as separate practices. Think of them as qualities of the mind that you work at that help each other along. Because once concentration gets more solid, your mindfulness gets a lot clearer. So mindfulness will turn into directed thought as it shades into the steadiness of concentration. The word jhana is related to a verb jayati, which is a homonym for a verb to burn. But it burns in a steady way, like the flame of this candle in front of the room. Pali has different verbs for the word to burn. There's the burning of an ordinary fire that flickers and flames. But then there's jayati, which describes the burning of a, an oil lamp. Steady, so steady you can read by it. And that's the whole purpose of getting the mind to stay steadily here in the present moment, so you can read what's going on in the mind. In the beginning, that the steadiness requires some protection, just like the candle here. If there's a, the wind outside started to flare up more than it is right now, we'd have to put a glass globe around the candle so the flame would stay steady. That glass globe is directed thought and evaluation. Keep reminding yourself to come back. Stay with the breath. Stay with the breath. Stay with the breath. 
consistently. And then evaluation looks at the breath. Is this a comfortable place to stay? What do you need to adjust? Do you need to change the place you're focusing? Do you need to adjust the breath? Do you need to adjust some of the concepts in your mind about what you're doing? If the breath is too subtle to follow, can you just stay with the sense of the body sitting here? There's lots of things to evaluate. This is where the element of discernment comes in the practice, the element of insight. Again, we often hear that jhana practice is a tranquility practice, and insight is something else. And again, the Buddha didn't divide things up that way. He said you need tranquility and insight in order to get the mind to become steady like this. The insight lies in understanding what problems you have to face and how you can get around them. And the tranquility is the element of steady, calm, watching things. And so use this sense of directed thought and evaluation to protect what you've got. And as a sense of ease develops, a sense of feeling comfortable in the present moment develops, okay, you've got to protect that even more. Stick with it. Work at whatever way you need to maintain that sense of well-being. Learning when you're trying too hard to make it better, learning when you're not trying hard enough to notice what can be done to relax things even more, make them more comfortable. That's all an element of insight, watching things making sure things are just right. This is the element of insight, the element of discernment that we're working on in the path. We develop it in simple practices like this, just learning what's just right in terms of the breath. That's the middleness of our middle way right now. The word middleness also applies to the appropriateness of what we're doing. Sometimes we really have to be very protective of what we're doing when there are lots of external distractions. Or the mind itself seems to be rambunctious, hard to bring under control. So we make an extra effort during times like that. Other times the effort doesn't have to be quite so strong. All I have to do is just watch, keep tabs of things, and they seem to behave on their own. And if you mess with them too much, they're going to, they're going to rebel then. So you have to be very sensitive to what's going on. This, again, is part of the middleness of the middle way, the appropriateness of what has to be done. And as you develop this sense of appropriateness of what's just right, that's how d discernment develops in the midst of concentration practice. The Buddha said there's no discernment without jhana, no jhana without discernment. The two qualities help each other along. So if you find yourself slipping off the breath, slipping off the topic of your meditation, remember these things. When things get balanced, you don't have to think about them that much. Once you just develop a sense of balance, maintain that balance in your practice. It'll be subverbal. It's like sailing a boat. When you first get on for your first sailing lessons and you're told to steer the boat to the left, sometimes you flip it over because you steer too hard. When you're told to steer to the right, again, you flip it over the other direction because you're steering too hard. But after all, you begin to get a sense of exactly how much pressure you have to use with your hand on the rudder. You get to the hardly even think about it. It's an intuitive sense. You're alert to it. You have to be alert, but you don't have to verbalize it. This is what we're working towards in the practice, getting that intuitive sense of what's just right for right now, when you have to apply a little bit more pressure, when you have to hold back a little bit. So you don't need all these concepts. It seems gets more and more intuitive. The mind gets more and more firmly settled right here. So you can actually drop the direct of thought and evaluation and just plow right into the sensation of the breath, plow right into the whatever your object is. And when you get there, you begin to wonder, why did you ever think that you had to do anything more in the meditation than just be right here? That's what it seems like from that perspective. Watch out that you don't get complacent, because you can lose this. It's simply a matter of having that intuitive sense of where your spot is and how to stay there. This is how we develop a foundation for the mind. You use mindfulness, you use your discernment to get the mind concentrated, and then once it's concentrated, you can use that concentration to see things even more clearly. All the factors of the path help one another, and they come together. 
there's a unity to the path, even though it has eight folds. It's one piece of paper. So if these thoughts are helpful, when you find yourself drift, drifting off or losing balance, keep them in mind. But there comes a point where you don't have to keep them in mind. All you have to do is just be very watchful, very alert, making sure you're not complacent. But you can drop the concepts. And by dropping them doesn't mean you'll forget them. They'll be there to pick up again when you need them. But you don't have to carry them around all the time. It's like a magic set of tools. They float right within your reach. You don't have to carry them. Or like your shadow. It goes everywhere you go, but you don't have to carry it with you. It places no weight on you at all. <coughs> 